Hello. So this video, we are tackling synthetic division. So we've talked about polynomial long division, and now we're going to do synthetic division. So by way of sort of introduction, because these things are very similar tools, we're going to start by doing the actual long division version so that we can see the sort of parallel and why you might use synthetic rather than polynomial long division in sort of certain circumstances. So recall, right, looking at this here, we have this x minus 1, right, dividing into this ginormous polynomial. So we do sort of the same thing we usually do, right? We take the first term and divide it by the first term of the thing we're dividing by, get x to the fourth, multiply that against what we're dividing by, subtract off, right? And we keep going doing this, right? We drop the next term, do that same division. Okay, we're going to do x cubed, multiply x cubed against it, subtract off. Now we have 4x cubed, drop the next piece, etc., etc., right? So as we're working through this, I'm going to make this sort of observation, and this was sort of an important deal that we talked about, right, was this how we had to have all the terms here, right? So even though this was x to the fifth plus 3x cubed dot dot dot, we actually had to inject this 0x to the fourth and this 0x as placeholders, otherwise this whole process sort of starts to break down. So even though we're dropping 0x, well, we still need that so that when we do the 6x times our sort of divisor here, we end up getting something that actually lines up when we do this subtraction down here, right? But the flip side of that that I'm going to notice is that as we're doing this, right, drop the negative 13, do that same division, it turns out sort of necessarily that I end up having all of the powers represented up here as well, right? So there's no sort of missing powers, and in fact, even if for some reason I, I couldn't divide it straight in, that means that I'd end up with like a 0x squared or something along the way. And so what I would end up doing is putting a 0 up top, right? So I would still have everything represented even if it had a 0 coefficient in order to make this whole process work. Now, if it doesn't go in evenly, I'm going to get a remainder, right? Here we have this uh, remainder here. But then that means that we take that remainder and we put it as the sort of remainder bit on the end down here. At the sort of end of the thing divided by the actual sort of divisor piece, okay? Okay, so why sort of go through all this? Well, it turns out that there's sort of a shorthand version of this process where we do basically the same thing, but instead of doing it with the x's and the powers of x's is sort of having this tracked the whole way, we can do it instead without all those x's and their powers sort of put in together. And it turns out to take up a lot less space and be arguably a lot quicker. To that end, the first thing we have to do is actually take this thing and find it zero. And this is actually kind of an important, albeit subtle difference, because a lot of the times the zero may not link up exactly the way you expect. We're going to see an example of that probably in another video, but as a first step, first thing we're going to do, set this thing equal to zero, solve. So we get x equals one. Now we're going to draw a little grid piece where I'm going to take that zero and put it in the top left corner. So that one over here where I got x equals one is indeed the one that we have down here. Now, the whole idea is to represent the powers of x's without having to write the powers of the x for all of them. So what I'm going to do sort of by way of showing in this video is I'm going to write out the power of x's, but this part you don't have to do. I will say that it can be very helpful to make sure you don't make a mistake. But I'm going to write out along this top little benchmark here, this top little segment here, all of our powers of x sort of just written out. So I have x to the fifth, x to the fourth, third, second, x to the first, and a constant term. And to be clear, I'm, I'm picking x to the fifth here because of x to the fifth over here, right? So I'm, I'm getting ready to sort of represent this polynomial over here via this stuff down here, okay? All right, so the way I'm gonna do that is underneath each of these x powers, like here, I'm going to write the actual number, the coefficient for that power. So here, I have a one here because it was the one over here. Likewise, for x to the fourth, I have a zero x to the fourth, so I'm gonna make that thing a zero. For x cubed, on my left, I have three x cubed, so I have the three over here. And this is how I'm gonna get all of these pieces, right? So I have a two, 
then I'm going to have that 0 from the 0x, and then I'm going to have that minus 13 for the c. Be careful that we want to keep the sign, right? Like all the other ones were positive, but I have a negative 13, so I'm, I have to make sure that I have that negative. Now the next thing I'm going to do, again, I don't have to write in the columns, but it can be helpful to organize your work, at least think of it in terms of columns. And then I'm going to leave a little space down here below each of these numbers, and then I'm going to write another one of these sort of horizontal lines here to separate some stuff. So the first thing I'm going to do is drop that first number. So that one, I'm going to drop that as a one. Then I'm going to multiply that by my zero. So I'm multiplying by one, but that one down here is this one up here. So if my zero were five, I would multiply by five. If it were negative 17, I would multiply by negative 17. Once I've done that, I'm going to rewrite it below the next number. So I multiply by one to get positive one, rewrite that below the zero, and then add straight down, okay? And repeat. So now I have a one on the bottom, multiply by that zero again, the zero being this red one, right? So I have a one here, so I'm gonna multiply by one, which will get me one again, write that underneath the three, add straight down. Take that four, multiply it by that one, because the one is a zero, that gets me four, put it underneath the two, add straight down, rinse, repeat, right? So I'm gonna keep going until I get my negative seven. All right, now I have effectively sort of completed the process, although it doesn't necessarily look like it. <laughs> so looking at this, right, getting rid of the little instruction there, what I've managed to do is pull out, as it turns out, the coefficients for my new sort of function, where each of these columns, I'm going to write one smaller of a power. So here I have x to the fifth, so underneath I'm going to do x to the fourth. So that one corresponds to one x to the fourth. The next one, one x to the third, four x squared, six x, six, and then that negative seven is actually a remainder, right? Negative seven over x minus one. And then if I look at this thing, this thing here that I've now sort of computed is exactly the thing up here that I also computed, right? So I can actually rewrite this as the same format where, again, I'm recognizing, right, that this, this one that I'm sort of corresponding to, right, the one that I got down here, this corresponds to this x minus one. So I'm going to rewrite this as x minus one times and then my function down here, okay? All right, so what do we do? Well, we sort of went through an example and talked about synthetic division. So in particular, Synthetic division is sort of the same idea as polynomial long division, but without any of the x's or power of x's. This can be nice because it can be way faster, right? If we actually sort of went through that quickly instead of going very sort of slowly to make sure everybody was following along. But if we went through it quickly, I mean, there's very little in terms of complicated calculation and it's sort of just those lines, you know, a couple lines of numbers. So you can go through it very fast. But there's some drawbacks too. Uh, so we're gonna look at those a little more closely in the other videos, but in particular, these things only work for linear things. So in particular, right, I, needed to, I needed a zero that I could plug in. So that makes it so I can't really divide by something like x squared plus one, because x squared plus one doesn't really have a real value zero, so synthetic division doesn't really work. So synthetic division really only works with things that have the sort of form x plus a number or x minus a number, things like that. There's some other caveats too. For example, it's harder to see when you make a mistake because you don't see the powers not matching up. If you forgot to put in a zero somewhere, for example, everything will look like it works even though it's not. So there are some drawbacks, but if you get used to it and you're sort of using it correctly, it can be very quick in comparison to long division. So it is a very useful tool. Okay, so that is that?